it has been well known for well over 100 years now that UVC radiation has germicidal properties, killing bacteria and viruses. And indeed, 254 nanometer UVC radiation produced by mercury is used routinely in the disinfection of water, air and surfaces. But there are some safety considerations because at this wavelength, there's a sunburn induced on the human skin and also it causes a painful photokeratitis to the human eyes. And therefore, that particular wavelength of UVC can't be used in populated areas. And apparently, the solution is far UVC emitted from eczema lamps, either at 207 nanometers or is more commonly being pushed at the moment, 222 nanometers. Now, apparently, this wavelength of radiation is short enough that it can destroy the virus, but not pass beyond the stratum corneum in the skin, and therefore is apparently safe for humans. There is good laboratory evidence to show that far UVC at 222 nanometers is effective at killing both bacteria and viruses. Most of this work has come out of Columbia University. And this graph here on the slide shows the effect of 222 nanometers on two different strains of coronavirus, neither of which is the current strain uh, of coronavirus, but there's no reason to expect that the behavior would be any different. And again, in the laboratory and in mice, the evidence is compelling for far UVC safety. A research group at Kobe University in Japan has shown that mice who are susceptible to UV induced skin cancers when exposed, chronically exposed to far UVC radiation, there was no induction of tumours. Now, whilst the laboratory studies and the evidence are good, uh, very robust and very encouraging, there is a lack of real world studies. Our unit undertook a clinical study in 2014, looking at the effects of far UVC on human skin. And that clinical study actually appears to contradict most of the other evidence that's available. It showed that erythema was induced at doses below that which are required for bacteria disinfection. And it also showed that there was DNA damage present both in the upper epidermis and in the basal layer as well. However, some computer modeling that we published just a few months ago seems to suggest that it might have been longer wavelengths that were present in the eczema lamp that were causing the DNA damage in that basal layer. And this is encouraging because it might explain why the clinical study in 2014 appears to contradict much of the other research that's been published. However, whilst the far UVC wavelength at 222 nanometer didn't appear to cause CPD in the basal layer, according to the computer modeling, it did still cause CPDs in the upper and the mid basal layer. And therefore, the computer modeling is far from conclusive. And really, we need a real life, real world study in humans to test this technology. This has actually been done by a group in uh, Japan. Uh, it hasn't been published on, but it has been presented at several conferences. Unfortunately, that study was performed on the back of the human hand, which we know is not particularly sensitive to ultraviolet radiation. And also that they only looked for erythema at 24 hours. Now, in the original study that we did in 2014, we saw that the UVC induced erythema appeared within sort of five to six hours and could disappear as quickly as one hour. So in summary, the laboratory results for this far UVC technology are very encouraging, both in terms of its efficacy and its safety. But there's a real lack of real world studies. The hype around this technology at the moment is exponential. And I think we just need to 
take a little bit of optimistic caution for the time being. Thank you for listening to this presentation today. Please do remember to look at our YouTube channel if you'd like some more material on photodermatology education. Thank you.